check, 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 check. about to teach an hour-long movement session. If you are logged into the YouTube, which if you're viewing this, I guess you are, we have had some issues in the past with our live stream. We're streaming from a different place today, so it might be stronger, um, but if you do have issues 
in the live stream. You can just go to my Instagram where we will also be live streaming. We usually have more luck with that and less lags. Um, that's at underscore slow danger underscore. I'll be going live there right at six. Yeah. And we will also be keeping this class on the YouTube. And there are other classes that you can view at your leisure um, whenever you feel like you want to. House that we live in that is owned by Dan Wetmore, dear friend. Um, get to know the space you'll be practicing in, examining maybe the edges, the objects, the unexpected animals that might run into the frame. We're going to get started around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But join us at any time you can, from our home to yours. This is the May edition of Virtual Slow Danger Physical Integration. We're going to have a good time here in our, our front room with some original music from us as well as some Pittsburgh friends. So hang tight. We'll get started soon.
right. We're going to get started here in a minute or two. I see some people checking in on YouTube. The If you are streaming on YouTube, the chat is live. So at any time, if you feel that you want to post in the chat, you can, but it's definitely not necessary. But we're going to get started here in a moment while you wait for the next two minutes or so. I invite you just to settle into your space a bit. Maybe you're in your home space, your bedroom, your office, or somewhere else. Maybe you're in another space or you're sharing an outdoor space or a space with another friend or loved one. But wherever you are, I just invite you to settle into your body, settle into your space a bit, and prepare yourself. Also, if you experience any issues with lagging on the stream, we are also streaming on my Instagram at underscore slow danger underscore. Um, we had some issues last week because of thunderstorms and a bad Wi-Fi connection. So we apologize and we're trying to find the best system. So if you have issues with the YouTube stream, go to Instagram. We're going to try to record each class, and they'll still be put up on the YouTube if you want to return to practice. So. So we're going to get the IG live rolling, and we're going to start this playlist over. So find a place to start, any kind of posture. It might be a standing posture. get started um, as we wait for people to kind of come through hey um, we're going to be teaching a one hour practice um, we'll just reiterate what we've been repeating every week um, this practice is an hour condensed version of our normal spy slow danger physical integration class which is an improvisational um, experience where we offer a lot of somatic imagery and you're invited to take that into your own lens into your own home in whatever capacity that you have today um, as you can see we're in a different location we are going to um, be streaming from our home today um, we think it will have a better connection on the internet um, and just reiterating what Anna was saying, we're just happy to be here with you all. We will be archiving these classes online. Um, so just find a place to start uh, a posture to settle in. It can be standing, it can be lying down, sitting. Um, and we're going to start with just a soft kind of meditative stillness place. So find that posture that you can be in for a while. And just take a breath or two to settle into your form a bit in that posture. Settling into your skin and into your bones. Acknowledging your breath. And just taking in a couple of nice breaths. They don't have to be big inhales and exhales. They can be. But just starting with a few gentle, nice breaths to kind of prepare our body for practice. Cleansing our palate. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. And let's imagine that wherever we are, sitting, standing, lying down, that we're in complete darkness, finding comfort in that place, settling into our form, into gravity. Now let's imagine in that dark space that a bright light shines in front of us, illuminating the front of our body, creating shadows, peaks and valleys, perhaps a warming sensation from the light, the incandescent lamp. And let's allow that light now to travel to the right side of our body. Illuminating that side, creating now new shadows. As you bathe in the light, continue to relax your weight into your body. Let go of any excess tension that might be forming. 
now let's see that light move, illuminating the back space of our body. A warm sensation on the flesh of our back, on the flesh of our backs of legs. Continuing to breathe, now allowing that light to move to the left side of our body, completing the four sides, illuminating that side. Now allowing that light to shift, illuminating us from above like a strong spotlight. Now seeing that light move and light us from beneath as if a hole to the center of the earth is opening up and that light is shining strongly out of that. Now from that up lit light, let's imagine that the light now grows all the sides, the tops, the bottoms, the fronts are illuminating us now as if we're suspended in a strong sunbeam or a big pool of light, allowing our skin to sense the space around us, to sense that light, to sense our garments, allowing our breath to pass across our tongue, across our roof of our mouth, through our nostrils. Taking one inhale breath, letting our arms rise and float up as if we're gonna create two vertical streams two waterfalls with our arms. Big inhale breath. And on the exhale, let's cut the strings and have our arms slowly descend back down. Whichever pathway they take is the right path. Still letting that light shine on your skin. The arms reach our sides, continuing to let go of any excess weight or excess tension, letting go of that tension in the lower back or in the jaw. Wherever you're situated, maybe it's seated, maybe it's standing, it can be done in any position. Just start to draw attention to the pelvis. Last week we talked about the pelvis as a planet and the limbs and other parts of the body orbiting that center. So just starting to imagine the big dome or globe of the pelvis and isolating it and moving it around the space. If you're seated, that can just be tipping your weight to different edges of the pelvis. If you're standing, it means kind of pushing into the air around you. Imagining this center like a big biosphere, sending air into that dome what's growing inside that space. And can we also imagine like an infinite sky inside that pelvis? Just using that to start to feel how you can roll the bones and feel all the joints in that space. There are so many. You can even use it to shift into different positions or configurations. It really can be adapted in any form. Just starting to feel the expanse, the infiniteness of this space. Also maybe noticing how the hips, how the femurs come in to this biosphere. As Keeping it really light and airy. Keeping that 
biosphere of the pelvis in action, as Anna said, a sense of lightness and airiness, but perhaps allowing it to open up a bit more in the sense of echoes, allowing Anna guided us through some shifts, which might mean that our legs are echoing a bit with that pelvic motion, letting some soft bends in the legs and other parts happen if, if it's necessary from the pelvis movement. Continuing again to sense that airy quality, that sense of lightness. And as Anna said, we can shift our form or our posture, we can use the weight of the pelvis and the direction we're sending it to usher us into new, new formations and new carriages of our body trying to see how this this one unit can adapt to any situation it can adapt to seating it can adapt to mid space high space you can jump but just keep keeping this exploration in the bowl in the biosphere in the infinite space of the the place that houses your organs for creation Maybe even touching base with those organs, the anus, your genitals. And just seeing if you're clenching in any space. Are you clenching your butt? Are you clenching your sphincter? Are you clenching your hip flexors? Maybe starting to shift our space. So starting to shift a little bit more rapidly up and down. As Anna said, opening up into those shifts, and it's if it's available for you, getting a bit more playful with your range and the planes of space that you're working through. Like Anna said, taking things lower and back up, perhaps a bit more swiftly or rapidly. We're gonna stay with this pelvic bowl this pelvic biosphere for a bit longer. Maybe even every now and then inviting a little jostle. Maybe it's a vibration. Maybe it's just like someone like pulling a string at the hips. Like we're kind of trying to like take the snow globe or the biosphere and just shake it up a little. bit longer with the pelvic motion, the pelvic shake. Feeling how this, this kind of fluid that we're shaking can spread to other parts of the body. Come up and down the spine. and kind of starting to narrow this. So seating on all fours, standing, just narrowing the distribution of your weight and containing and drawing it in. Maybe the biosphere was huge and infinite and now it's becoming a little marble on the inside of our pelvis that we're, we're hugging. Beautiful. We're hugging and then allowing that shiver to slowly come to stillness. Remaining tethered to breath as we shift back into stillness, perhaps remembering that light that washed upon us. We're gonna move up to another biosphere in the body, which is the diaphragm. And just slowly starting to feel how, with your breath, it expands and contracts. It rises and falls. And it flexes this incredible space that we have called our rib cage. 
so flexible, so complicated. Or maybe you just want to start out with breath. I know I hold a lot of tension in my diaphragm. So how can you send that breath to the, to the vagus, to the phrenic nerves that actually connect our brain and run through the spine and into the diaphragm? And actually also trigger fight or flight responses. And with this, starting to feel how you can kind of swell and contract. It feels like while the pelvis feels fluid, it still feels very bony and whole. The diaphragm as a biosphere feels like this like thing that expands and contracts. It can fill and open in different ways. So just starting to feel how you can kind of like almost like there are parts of your body that turn into a balloon and they expand and then they fall back down. And not just thinking about the front, how do you do that in the back? Through the vertebrae, expanding into the backs of the lungs. And noticing how this connects to the shoulder blades. This biosphere really incorporates this center and also the shoulders and the arms and how as you swell and contract those slippery shoulder blades can kind of fall and rise and glide along the back. Those slippery shoulder blades, those g gliding scapula are, s are the echoes of that diaphragmatic biosphere. Just like the bends in our leg joints coming from that pelvic planet, treating the shoulders and the arms as those echoes as well. Like Anna said, opening up to the space around us, the dimensionality, feeling the flesh of our back, feeling the flesh of our side, of our torso side of diaphragm. And if it's available for you starting to play a bit, like we did in the pelvis with how you're translating it through the space, going into further ranges or different planes of space. I'm feeling that, again, that infinite quality, how you could grow so large that you just hold the whole world inside this biosphere. And you can kind of contract it back inside of yourself. Maybe starting to incorporate a little bit more these arms. Like they get cast off the swelling and contracting. Feeling like the arms can touch the air around you. How we can create so many different curves and circles through that whole space, through the biosphere of the diaphragm and also the little radiuses that we have on these orbiting planets that are our arms. As we're ushering into more range and more space, perhaps allowing some of the senses to open up a bit more tasting the air around you, or the skin sense, as Anna and I like to call it, feeling that air, that atmosphere as you on your flesh as you move, feeling your garments slide around, or for me, it's trying to sense the texture of this rug and the temperature of the air. And also feeling the capacity for this center, this biosphere, to fly, to pump. Like a bellow to a fire. To inhale and exhale air. An inflation and deflation of the lungs inside the sphere. Continue to move with this bit longer, this biosphere of the chest that Anna has ushered us into, taking up more space if it's available, 
Can you feel as though the arms start in the diaphragm now? Almost like you're conducting the space around you. Or you're singing out with no words, with no sound. Beautiful. Letting this beat ride out with it a little bit, maybe even finding that in the body. We'll come back. Let's actually start to focus a little bit more on the pump in the arms. So finding something strong to move against. Ooh, thick in the air. And feeling that connected to the diaphragm, connected to the waist, to the back. And you can play with speed, something that's repetitive, but it can also transform. Play with the viscosity of the air that you're moving these arms through. Maybe that air gets a bit thicker at times, creating a sense of resistance. How can we be, give off the quality of resistance without over muscling or gripping the muscles? Thinking of a thick air or a thick liquid that we're moving through, or maybe a very light air, something that's easy to swing our limbs and move them through. Beautiful. Let's actually draw, as the beat starts to fade, let's draw this pump in so it becomes more rapid but smaller through the hands, through the arms, through the, through the lungs. Beautiful. Letting that pump come inside the body so it's just a soft little flex and release in that space. Ooh, can you feel it sideways? That kind of expansion in the lungs. Can you feel it forward and back? Letting that soften. Beautiful. Sensing the difference in your body. And we'll focus on the third biosphere, which is the noggin, the head and neck. Just starting to feel it softly oscillating on the occipital lobes, feeling the origin of it inside your skull, the origin of the top of the spine, the cervical. Almost like there is a tiny biosphere inside of our head. We're rolling it around all the ridges of our brain. All the nerves are getting washed and massaged by this little tiny marble that's circling around the inside of our head. Letting the rest of your body feel soft and weighted. Coupled with that marble inside of the noggin that Anna gave us, we can also think about those ridges that were mentioned and the bony landmarks of the face the ridges of the eyebrows, the cheekbones, the chin, the back of the head. And simultaneously, can we work with or fluctuate between those images of the marble inside the noggin as well as almost like we're thinking of those ridges, the bony landmarks as a way to sketch into the outside space. So this marble inside the noggin influences the motion as well as this curiosity to inscribe the space around us with those bony landmarks or even the patches of skin on the face. We can allow our face to move as well. We can reach our lips a bit further out or reach our tongue out or we can close our eyes and open them or we can imagine that our ear the flesh of our ear is pulling us towards a new patch 
along with that marble that's inside. Anna said oscillation, and that word really helps us with this idea of letting the head be like a gyroscopic, oscillating biosphere. And like we've done with the other two bowls, continue to unveil your experimentation with it, finding new ways, being careful with the head not to knock it against anything, but take it through different planes of space or different ways of rotating. How can the axis of the skull feel gyroscopic? It feels like this biosphere is constantly kind of orienting and tumbling and shifting, as is all the fluid inside of your vestibular system. It's actually just rolling and pouring into different centers. So really connecting to that gyroscopic quality in this biosphere. Maybe it's more fluid, more watery, felt like earth, air, water, maybe fire in the pelvis too. So finding that gyroscopic, being gentle to the neck, softening the jaw, softening the muscles of the face, or also using them to find other strength in the neck. Beautiful. And as you're doing this, just starting to kind of layer in attention from the other centers. That Maybe you're focusing on the gyroscopic head and then all of a sudden you're adapting your pelvis. I mean, you are. You have to be. <laughs> Those adaptations of the other spheres that Anna's mentioning are similar again to those echoes. Before we let them all be kind of free, still using the head and neck as the kind of influencer of the spheres. How does the this play in the head and neck influence the spine? Can it allow the spine to move like a serpent as well as assist the spine in stacking like a ivory tower or a strong pillar. Also feeling how as you're moving through this oscillating gyroscopic place with the head, you can get really dizzy and disoriented and just being sensitive to that. But also seeing how you could focus the eyes and shift that focus with the gyroscopic motion. Finding things to focus on on the body or out externally. Maybe shifting the, the more broad gyroscopy to now just focus on the eyes in the space. Just focus on the eyes how we can find our body. We can find points in our body with the eyes and then we can find far points and mid midpoints. So really playing with the gradient of your focus here. Those far points can be even past the walls that we might be looking at. I like that Anna said midpoints. There's a practice in mind of trying to see something in the air in front of you as if there was a little butterfly or a little orb floating in front of you. How do we focus on, on that? Also using the eyes to see our own body in the space. Watching our garments crinkle and unfurl. Lovely. These eyes are like the light from a lighthouse where we send them can influence the rest of our body or it can influence the directionality or it can be a way to bring in 
outside impulses to move, like what a lighthouse does. It helps bring in the ships. Let's play with these eyes being our, our beacon for a bit longer. And allowing it to blend and get murky. Knowing when you're fixated on a point and knowing when you're allowing that point to transition. What's that, that point, almost like a focus knob on a camera with your eyes, where you're watching something and then all of a sudden it comes out of focus and you're focusing on something closer to you or there's no focus. There's a fuzzy daytime TV focus. Really playing with that and noticing how you can put that on your body and your body responds. Trying to open up the channel for the body to respond. And this connects us deeply to our spine, which we were starting to call our, the snake that lives inside us. So starting to notice how the eyes are the head of that snake. And how that, that snake can follow through with that motion. Beautiful. And wherever you are, let's bring our arms out in space and find a wide, wide, wide position. Just feeling how infinite, how big, how expansive we can be. And then taking that shape and feeling how we can kind of dismantle it from the external, from different joint parts. How do the bowls, the biospheres, aid in this? Allowing little tiny collapses, even allowing a re-engagement of that original shape and moving back into the tiny collapses. How can we maintain quality of release or even perhaps softness in this collapsing body. Almost like a kind of a soft letting go of each joint, a soft opening of a valve or a soft pulling the rug out from underneath. Let's take this collapse down in space, descending our form. How low can we go? Where can we still collapse? Even when we think we've hit rock bottom, is there more to let go of? collapsing those parts until you do reach a place of bottoming out or rock bottom. Just when you think you might have gotten there, see where you can maybe let go again. And before we think about ascending back up, Let's just submit in this posture as if we're spreading with each exhale, as if we're at the bottom of the ocean, leaving an imprint in that sandy floor. Spreading more, submitting further into that gravitational force upon our body. As if we're puddling or pooling. We 
and see if you can remember that quality of those collapses what it might have felt like and Anne and I have been trying to capture that quality or play with that through a sense of collapsing upwards like a rebuilding through collapse or through tiny releases we can begin that journey now collapsing upwards rebuilding our posture it might be in collapsing the flesh in the elbow pocket so the hand can find a new position As we go, we might discover bony landmarks and skin patches that we use as guides or as assisters by pressing them into the floor to bring a lightness to other parts. Begin to emerge from that deep ocean floor. Kind of a slow grow, like a shark in the water. jellyfish drifting on the current. How can you let your impulses feel like a current happen to you? Even imagining that ocean current carrying a part of your body, allowing you to move further upward. Maybe now we're moving through different Villages of coral. Continue to collapse upward or usher parts higher into the space. I'm starting to let these impulses also be driven. Maybe the current is driving from this kind of like beat tape track. How you can feel easy and like hit those notes, those beats with your body. Or they're, the notes are literally driving the body to move in other directions. Remembering to layer the resonances of those biospheres too. How do those things come from external places, the legs? But they can also come from internal centers. And what's the difference between leg initiation, external initiation, and internal? Let's actually take one leg and just find that a little bit for ourselves. Just standing on one leg. Let's start by seeking, like our toes, our little, little um, light sources, little flashlights. Or that image of the lighthouse again. Our legs are these beams of light that we're stacking upon. And then let's switch that and move the leg from the internal pelvis. I'm not even worried about finishing my goddamn toes. <laughs> I'm just feeling the slipperyness in my biosphere that is allowing me to, <laughs> to move this orbiting planet. Beautiful, let's switch legs. Starting with those Little toes, those little lighthouses, you know, that quintessential splayed contemporary dancer toe. <laughs> I'm just feeling how that, even like someone pulling on the heel, the heel reaching away. And now let's reverse it. So letting the slippery planes of the pelvis move the 
leg. Letting the arms also adapt at will. Beautiful. Nice. But let's find a little step touch, hey. Keeping that play in the legs, that sense of release that we might have found. And with this new kind of groovy track, this is a, a beat that I made yesterday. Let's find a seat, a little step touch, a little groove with the legs. We can even have moments of that on one leg again, but let's feel a little more spicy about it, a little groovy. Like this thing just kind of emerges from a very casual place. We were just like achieving something pretty difficult, which is moving our legs around on one, one leg. And let's come back into this casual feeling in our pelvis. How can you play the leg in the air around you? Play the orbiting moons. Feeling really kind of like slippery and ooey gooey on the inside. Like you could turn your legs into jello. Like um, Taylor calls it string bean cow boy. Like you Finding got on, a little string bean cow boy. Like you got on some nice rhinestone chaps and you're really trying to show them off. Let's show them the front side of these chaps first. Each leg, really give it to them. New leg, show them the rhinestones of the chaps. Show them the back, keep the pelvis moving. Show them the back of your legs. Let our flesh move around. Let's keep grooving a bit. Take it through your space. Uh. Starting to feel the, bi the mini domes of the arches here too. Playing that little pitter patter on the feet. Letting it kind of, again, shake up the inside. Who fucking cares? We are in our house. So you can look like... We literally have a... You've ever seen. We have a giant window here that all the neighbors and passerbyers can see. So like let's Anna said, who cares? Let's just groove for a bit longer, even though the song might be changing. Let's actually turn this into a little... A little fit. A little hissy fit. It's our, it's our weekly permissible fit. So just letting yourself kind of like have moments of little spaz in the body. Fitty for a little bit longer, taking care of your joints, but a little bit of fit, a little bit of ah. Let's put that whole fit, let's put that whole fit in the feet. Like the floor's hot. Quick feet for a bit. Here we go. Shoo, 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 shoo. We can find a, a little fit. Put it in the knees. We can even find a little fit noise with our voice. Yeah. We can't hear you, but you can still do. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put it in our pelvis. <sighs> Shaking the pelvis up a bit. Uh, let's put it in our shoulders. Shimmy action in the shoulders, a little bounce. Your shimmy came from a hissy fit. <laughs> no, and with taking a lot of care, we can put it in our head. Maybe it's really small and it's just shaking our head no. Let's actually just do that. Let's shake our head no. Learn how to say no. <sighs> Let's shake our head no. Let's shake it yes. Number one rule is an artist. Shaking the head yes as well. And then somewhere in between, like a maybe or a uh, Letting the fit kind of go. We got... A little let's bit activate, of it out. Let's activate the hands a little too again. And that pumping. Coming back to that pumping. But now let's imagine that we're we're taking everything that we're fitting about and it's like we're riding in the space around us. You can punch it, you can slice it, you can kick it. You're riding it with your whole body. You're riding it with your focus. It's like we have all these pencils on different parts of our body, all these mark-making objects, charcoal. Just a bit longer with the fit, letting a few more of it out, getting the last bits of energy and webs out of the fit. And as if our transition from fit to groovy dance is on like a crossfader, let's begin to fade from 
fit mode to, from tantra mode to kind of groovy, smooth mode again. Just Maybe enjoying this. a bit of step touch or a bit of sway or oscillation. And maybe this transition is just as simple as slowing down the hissy fit, slowing down the mark making. Can we still be as clear through our body? Let's start moving through that clarity. Moving through, we're still writing on the walls. We're just writing more definitive marks. You write on the wall with your, your shoulder. Let's find one shoulder. Write on the wall with that shoulder. Inscribing a message, mark making with that shoulder. We're going to take this through a few different landmarks, starting first either shoulder. Let's write with that shoulder, and then start to crossfade that writing with the elbow. Imagining that you have a little charcoal pencil or a marker or a something covered in paint that you can, whichever elbow it is, that you can inscribe. And we don't have to always be, I always find myself in like chicken wing when I think of elbow, <laughs> but we can also open that arm up and still think of elbow. And elbow is also inner elbow and side of elbow, not just the funny bone part that we always hit on the desk or something, but think about the other part, the dimensionality of the elbow. On top of this, Still keeping the mobility of the shoulder and the elbow. Let's layer in the wrist. The wrist has so much mobility. Thinking about that dimensionality, all that mobility Anna just mentioned, how we can work with that with the wrist. I like to even w watch my wrist while I play at times, moving it, trying to flex and fold the sides of the wrist or top or even rotate the hand on the wrist. A bit Let's longer with the wrist. Go into a little, just like a little fling out. And let that arm drop. And just notice the difference between two sides. Maybe like you're literally lopsided. Does one feel longer than the other? Or for me, it feels a bit more buzzy, a bit longer, a bit tingly. And let's take that charcoal pencil, that mark making device utensil that we had, and let's put it on the other shoulder, starting to move it through the space again. Again, thinking of the dimensionality of the shoulder, I think of armpit when I think of shoulder, I think of scapula and clavicle and have a little fun with it before we crossfade to the elbow really get to know that other shoulder and like something anna said earlier imagining that the shoulders start a lot deeper in our body almost like our wings our arms are attached to our spine and the sh so the shoulder is just a point on that long wing Let's begin that crossfade as Anna did on the first side into elbow, moving down the tricep and bicep into elbow, inner elbow, side elbow, chicken wing time, and also moments of extending it into space. Also, the weight of the elbow is fun to play with at times. Kind of like in that collapse filter that we were in earlier can use the weight of our parts or the initiation of our parts and move us through the space. Now let's crossfade to that other wrist. Like Anna said, the wrist has so much mobility, so much availability and capability of motion. So play with it. A bit longer with the wrist. like we did on the first side. Let's get the whole arm involved. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. 
shake it out just a little bit. Let it drop. Feeling the, like you're holding two ton balls at the end of your fingertips. And just start to let the groove come in through the pelvis and the heels again. Enjoying the feeling that this kind of club track drives into your body. And following that. In this groovy dance with the heels and the pelvis, not doing the same thing we did with the arms with the legs, but let's articulate those ankle joints a bit and those toes, feeling a little, little groovy or even a little at times mechanical, playing with different, Anna and I like to use a lot of different filters and qualities of movement. So take what might feel good or even invent some of your own. Keep playing with the heels a bit. Get up high on the toes like you have on a nice pair of shoes or even send them low or a nice little prance or a nice little shuffle. A nice little, I started out as a tapper. So sometimes I bring a nice little soft shoe quiet tap number in. A little bit longer with the groovy heels and ankles. And how do they affect the knees and shins and femurs? Writing this song out, let's open our stance towards the end, finding a wider stance with our feet, eventually letting our Heels find the floor again, and let's find a nice wide stance. Anna and I have been enjoying this nice slow plie situation. But first, let's just start with some slow plies or bends and straightens. We've been enjoying taking our hands across our thighs or across the creases of our hips and down and out. Let's take four or five of these quiet, soft, Pliés in second position. Using the breath as a partner, as fuel, as an usher for this plié. Let this be the final one, and we can kind of sit at the bottom and find a little stretch if you'd like. So we're moving into the latter part of our class. From that stretch, blooming back out to a wide position. And let's take a slow plie down and a sense of quickness to return. Using whatever you want with the arms, let's repeat that four or five times. Whatever form or port de bra you want to use, a slow, that air is thick on the way down, the air is thin on the way up. Let's do one more. Thick going down, quick going up. Now let's flip it. Quickness or a sense of collapse going down and a thickness, a resistance coming up. Quick down, thick up. Let's do two more. Continue to play with the arms, finding if it does feel available to you, you can even challenge your torso a bit or challenge yourself by displacing the torso. Let's just do one more for good measure. And before we close the feet, let's just wiggle that pelvis, wiggle those joints a bit before we move into first position. Almost like we had a tail coming out of our coccyx and we're just kind of like wagging it around and showing it off. Pussycat style. We used to have a tail at one point, most likely, in that very place. So before we find first position, as Anna said, let's wag that tail or flaunt it around like a cat. And let's actually take one big inhale, feeling that tail just folding over the legs. Let's hang over for a sec, letting waterfall rush out of the skull. 
even letting go a bit more. You can play with shifting the weight from the feet to the hands and back and forth. You can bend the legs if you want or you can keep them straight, whatever feels available to you. Just getting a nice sense of stretch if you can. And from this place, a nice inhale to float ourselves up to a mid-range point and just find a couple bends. Hovering over the sky. A nice flat back. Let's do two more. One more. And let's stack the spine. Find a way to kind of shift. Tipper tapper soft shoe. Those feet into a narrow position. Let's find it rotated. Like we have a slice of pizza in front of us. And just finding that bending in the legs in a more narrow position. Feeling the connection of the tail. How we can sink and grow into these feet. And then let's find that really slow down. You can also go down, down if you want. Fast up. Slow down. Up. Two more. Feeling the tail sliding right down. Trying to not let it arch. You And then quick down. Slow up. Oh yeah. Oh enjoy. <laughs> Slow. Ooh, enjoy that. Eee, it's so bad it's good. Last one. All the way up, all the way up. Draw the arms up. Draw like you're being strung and then floating over. the water pour out of the head, letting the shoulders slide off the back and be worn as earrings. You can keep this rotated position or you can also come to parallel, making an 11 with your feet, nodding the head yes and no, submitting again to gravity. Taking nice deep breaths, full lung, full body, Full belly breaths. Bit longer, hanging over and finding a nice bend in the knees and beginning to roll up, restacking the spine. Oh. Sense of openness in the chest, availability in the chest, availability in the pelvis. Feeling a soft pushing opening in the front. If you'd like, you can take a high release. Coming back. You can take a turn over one shoulder. Did someone say my name? No. Maybe they said it over here. No. Hello? No one's there. Last one. Hey. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us. Yeah, take your time. Um, we're doing these every week in May. Um, if you have the means to donate. All the info is on our Instagram. Um, Venmo at slow danger, paypal me slash slow danger, um, and also the link in my bio. And on May 8th, um, we're going to be releasing a dance film and album that we made with our dear friend and collaborator Jasmine Hearn. Um, so that's something to look forward to in your week if you'd like. But as Anna said, we're grateful to have you here. And you can join us next Sunday, same time. We will probably be here in our home. And thank you so much. Stay safe.